In this presentation, we will continue on with part five of our comprehensive partnership problem, this time thinking about and looking into and entering the depreciation schedules into our tax system, into our tax software, into our tax forms. We will be using Lacert Tax Software, Lacert owned by Intuit, the owner of QuickBooks. Here is our form uh, 1065. We've been entering the data into the balance sheet last time. So last time we entered the beginning balances into the balance sheet. The other thing we will need to deal with is the depreciation schedules, which will be supporting the the property plants and equipment information. So now if you if it's the first time you're entering the data into the tax system, you may want to enter the tax system and override the things such as the accumulated depreciation and the depreciation so that you can first enter the data and then go back in and see what will happen when you enter the schedules and see what type of adjustments will result when you enter the schedule. That way you can do it in a systematic way and, and see what the adjustments will be as you enter the schedules. Now, if you're performing the information, if it was in the system last year and rolling over to the current year, then you can't really do that because the information is already in the system. So we'll have to deal with the fact that we already have uh, this information and the system is going to be calculating things like depreciation for us. How can we take that information and still enter the, the data in basically a systematic type of fashion? Now, if you're dealing with a client that uh, a software that the partnership started last year, but you're entering it into the, the system this year and you don't and you're not going to roll it forward, you have to enter the schedules into the current year, uh, then you're going to need from the client something like depreciation schedules, which will look something like this. Now, many people, when, when you're talking about small partnerships, will have the depreciation schedule basically on a uh, tax basis but it's possible some companies will be running or some partnerships will have both a book basis depreciation and a tax basis depreciation in which case we'll have a deviation or, or a change between the two we're going to run that kind of more complex scenario here so we have two depreciation schedules one's going to be for the books and then we have one depreciation schedule for the taxation we're, now, typically, this is for, for 2019. Now, typically, this would be something for the prior year, 2018, that would be attached to their tax return and something that we can then use to enter into our system. We're just going to use these schedules to enter the beginning balances into our system. So uh, we're, we're going to enter just the equipment one and the, this equipment three. This one was purchased in the current year. So we'll deal with that in the current year when we do the data input. So I'm going to go back to our system and we're going to say, all right, let's put in the balance sheet or the depreciation information, the property plans and equipment information. And so we're going to go to up top. I'm going to go to the depreciation schedules. And it looks like this. This is the data input screen that we're going to be using for um, LACERT. So if I go back over and I'm going to say, all right, let's look at the federal where we have equipment one, uh, equipment two, and equipment three. So yeah, I'm just going to call it equipment one. Now, obviously, we would want a a more detailed name than that. Property, plant, and equipment is something that you could spend basically a whole course on in, in and of itself. Uh, but the ba some basic things you want to realize is that uh, you do not, even if you purchase multiple pieces of, of equipment at one time, you don't want to put them on the books as, as one group of equipment. Because when you sell it, you might sell only one of five and, and you, you'll have a problem with how you're going to sell the one of five when you put it on the books at five. You don't really want a generic name like I'm doing here. You, you want a specific name. You may, you may even want the serial number of the pieces of equipment so that you can track them. And when you sell them, you know which piece of equipment you're talking about. So this is, we're focusing more on the calculation here. The form is going to be uh, one the activity, the category. Now, often also, if you're getting this information from a prior tax return, you don't have control over any of that. You know, you're going to put the information in there as it as it's been given to you in the prior year tax return. We're going to put this into the machinery and equipment. The date it was placed in service, it says here was 1117. So I'm going to say 010117. The cost or basis is going to be the 60,000 for the first piece. We're going to say 60,179. Now uh, we're talking, we're looking at the prior year. This is the book and I'm on the federal. So we had prior year 179 of 50,000 and then depreciation of 10,000. 
this is what gets really confusing about these schedules is because now you got the depreciation, which is going to be, could use different methods. In this case, it's, um, a straight line half year convention, seven year life. So you're typically going to be using the makers, which is kind of a form of double declining half year convention, uh, but you could be using a, a straight line. So again, we're going to put this in the system and be consistent with the prior year tax return. So we're going to say that this was in the system prior year. So we got 179 we're gonna have to put in at the 50 and the depreciation of the 10,000 in the prior in prior years so I'm going to go back over and say we don't have any current 179 prior 179 we said was the 50,000 and then the prior depreciation or amortization was 10,000 so there is that item and then I'm going to go back over and we're going to pick up the the uh, this one the equipment three we're not going to put equipment two because it's going to be in in the current year so that's something we purchased in the current year equipment three on january 1st 2017. so i'm just going to call it equipment three is going to be on form number one it's going to be a category number three again it's going to be as of 010117 we're going to say and it's for the amount of uh, 255,000. So I'm gonna go back over and say this is for 255,000. Then as far as the depreciation goes, we have the prior depreciation of 100,000. So we're gonna say 100,000 prior. We don't have any 179 or special, so we're gonna keep it there. So I'm gonna say prior depreciation 100 thousand okay so let's take a look at what that will look like if i go back to the forms then we're going to go down to the depreciation schedules for 2019 and here we have them now in lacert you'll have a, a few different schedules we got the summary schedule this is kind of like a shortened version of the schedule uh, with less columns then you got the regular one which is the one you kind of have to use most of the time because it gives you the detail you need we're breaking it out by category there's the machinery and equipment there's the two pieces the date acquired January 1st, 2017, the costs 60 and 255. We have the prior uh, 179 deduction, then the prior year uh, basis and the prior year depreciation here. And so there, that's what we have thus far. And if we match that out to our forms for the federal, it looks good right so because we're not including this item here the second item is going to be included in the current year now we're also going to have a difference between the federal and uh the books because the book basis uh was this item and so we have different depreciation methods the books all straight line seven year notice i don't think i put the method in there to regular i'm going to go back over and I'm going to put the method, which was for the first piece. I think it was straight line seven year. We said it was straight line seven year. And for the second piece, it's going to be makers seven year. So it's going to be seven year makers. And let's go back over. And what that'll do is it'll, it'll calculate. Now we kind of forced the prior year depreciations, but that'll help us to calculate going forward now. So we have the straight line. A half year convention, seven years. It's already fully depreciated, nothing in the current year. Double declining, half year convention, maker's method. And that's going to give us the 44,600 in the current year. We're not concerned with the current year yet, but note it's already calculating it. And so we'll have to deal with that in some way, shape, or form once we start entering the data input into basically the tax return, the income statement form of the tax return. And you'll be able to see that if you go basically to, to page one of the tax return then we already have that depreciation that's pulling forward we didn't do any data input so we're gonna have to deal with that in in some way now the other thing we want to consider is the fact that we had two depreciation schedules it in some cases in many cases the for small partnerships they may just use the tax depreciation and not deal with the fact that the book depreciation could differ however you may want the book depreciation to be to differ and therefore, we'd have to put the adjustment between the tax and the book depreciation. So let's do that here. We're going to say, here's the book depreciation. And it's going to be using that straight line uh, convention seven years. So if we go back into the taxes, we could see the book depreciation down here. And if I scroll back over, it's, it's using the straight line and the double declining. 
So what I'm going to do is adjust that. So now I'm going to go back to the detail. We're going to then go to the equipment one. I'm going to scroll back down and say, here's the uh, regular AMT. And then here's the book depreciation. I'm simply going to change the method down here. I'm going to change it by going all the way down because I, I want to just pick a straight line here. Just the straight line method, not the maker's straight line because it has that uh, convention in it, half year convention. So I'm just going to say straight, straight line. And then I'm going to say underneath the, the life is going to be seven years. I'm going to do the same for the second one. So we'll go down here and I'm going to say, all right, we're going to scroll down to the book stuff. Scrolling down, scrolling down to the book stuff. There we go. And then we're going to say that this is going to be straight line. So I'm going to scroll down to the straight line information down here. So it's going to be straight line, seven years. Straight line, seven years. Then I'm going to go back up top. We're going to go to the forms. And so now we're on the book. There it looks good. We got the straight line, seven years. And that looks good. But we need to enter the prior year depreciation as well so we're going to force the prior prior year depreciation for the book purposes so i'm going to go back over and i'm going to i'm going to need the prior year which is uh which is calculating here i'm going to go ahead and force that to the book depreciation which will differ than the tax depreciation in the prior year let's start with the top one scrolling back down to where we had the book information straight line current year depreciation here's the prior year depreciation and if we go back up to our information we're going to say it should be the 17143 for the prior year 17143 so i'm going to say 17143 and then i'll go to the second one and then i got to scroll all the way back down again we're looking for the book information the book information there it is and we look for the prior year depreciation that's the one we want and then I'm going to pick up the book prior year depreciation here, which was the 100,000. So we're going to say 100,000. So I'll pick that up here, 100,000. All right. So then if we go back to our forms, we have the regular depreciation summary, the regular with the totals, and then the AMT, alternative minimum tax and then the book depreciation here the book depreciation which now has the prior year depreciation at the 17 and 100 now calculating the current depreciation as we can see here so now we got to think about well there's a difference between the current depreciation that's calculated here and what is recorded on the tax return up top so the tax return up top being at the current year depreciation at the 44.6 there's going to be a difference between those two and we'll, we'll use the software to basically force that difference out and, and create basically an adjustment in the software, which will be represented in the M1 adjustments. For right now, however, however, we're going to keep it at the default. So right now, note what is happening is the tax return is picking up. If I go to page one, the, notice the, the depreciation for taxes is the 44.6. If I go back up to the top, we're going to say... There's the 44.6, so that's picking up tax depreciation, not book depreciation, because book depreciation for the current year, if I scroll over, is the 45,000. So I'm going to go back up top. And you would think then, is there some kind of uh, Schedule K adjustment or M1 adjustment that's reconciling between the book and the taxes? and we don't see one right that's that's the beginning balance that's not an adjustment that's basically the net income which happens to be the amount there and then we're going to go to page five look at the m1s no m1 adjustment there so that's actually good i'm going to keep that there for now and then reconcile and recognize the fact that there should be an m1 adjustment later on and and once we get to the depreciation adjustment we'll go ahead and and use the software to, to help us with that calculation that difference between the book and tax information but as we do that what we want to recognize now is that we have these schedules that are going to start producing some some information uh, as we go through the process so before we even do any data input and this could be if you perform at the tax return from the prior year you'll have numbers in the first page before you even do any data input and that'll be things like such as the depreciation so that's going to populate here and that could populate if we look at the um the schedule l notice that we haven't entered the beginning the ending balances at all and it already has some some information in the ending balances so that'll populate as well 
And these may not tie out to what is on our ending balances in terms of the financial statement that we're going to populate into here if there has been any changes in the current year, such as new purchases or disposals of equipment in the current year. So next time we're going to go back in and now move to the ending balance of the balance sheet. That's going to be the next step in our process. At this point in time, we're kind of at the return where you would expect it to be if you were to perform other return over. So if you were working the return for the, for another year, it was in the system last year and you perform it, it over and you went straight into it, it would look something like this before you do any kind of data input into it. You've had some things that are going to be already populated in the current year and the prior year should tie out and everything should tie out in the prior year. Then you need to push forward and how can we go through the, the input in a systematic way given this system.